Hello and welcome to today's painting session. Uh, today I have a 5x7 piece of watercolor paper. I've got my water, my size 6 round. This is a Princeton Heritage brush. Um, I have my charcoal black, indigo, woad, um, a sort of slate gray that I made, um, raw umber and burnt umber. And those are we might not use all of them, but those are the colors that we're working with today. So first, I am going to lightly wash clean water on the top two thirds of this paper. This is gonna be the sky. And we'll use the, it's called a wet on wet technique. That's wet paper and wet paint. And I'll grab my woad, which is a bluish, bluish gray and a little bit of a green green hint to it. I'm just gonna wash this along the sky. I'm gonna layer that with my cooler tone gray. Just get a little bit of depth. And this is kind of a stormy-ish sky. So I'm using the tip of my brush and also the side because when I use the side of my brush and pull up, I get a, kind of a nicer texture that's reminiscent of clouds. It helps me make clouds a lot better. Now the danger when you're working with wet on wet is to get it too wet, um, which is where you have really no form whatsoever. The pigment all just sort of blurs together. And that does not make for a very nice skyscape. And I'm building up the pigment down here. This is sort of the horizon line. I'm going to take a little clean cloth. This is just a little bit of paper towel. And dab it where I want some clouds to be. Maybe some up here. Lighten it up just a bit there. The next bit will be the horizon. I'm gonna take my charcoal black. This is actually charcoal black. I made it out of pine charcoal. All right, just got distracted for a minute there. Um, okay, so we are working on the horizon line got distracted and my paper is dry so I'm going to add a little bit more water and you don't want it puddling that's going to ruin the effect but I do want a little bit of moisture here because I want it to bleed gently into the sky I don't want there to be a thick line yet so just add a little bit of charcoal that's too watery There we go, a little more pigment, a little less water, and that's going to give me a nicer line. And it's still not quite wet enough, dang it. The joys of <laughs> being distracted. Okay. I'm just going to dab up a little bit of the extra water, and that's just going to be fine. Okay. So then, add a line again here as the ground comes into from the background into the foreground we want to grow in definition so it doesn't have to bleed everywhere but the other thing to think about as you're making this abstract landscape is contrasting colors contrasting colors contrasting tones um, so what we don't want to have happen is to everything be the same tone, everything be the same value. Uh, we want there to be focal points. We want there to be differences in lightness and darkness and textures. Uh, so what I want to do now, I'm actually going to pull in that raw umber, a bit of raw umber. That's going to be my bit here. 
want something a little warmer than what we've been working with. And it's okay to touch the other paint. Just know that if the two paints are wet, they will, they will merge with each other, which is absolutely fine. And depending on which pigment, you'll have to play around with it a little bit. One will do the pushing, one will do the pulling. Often the one with more water does the pulling, but not always. Tap that up, because as I add the next bit, I don't want that to run away. Okay. So here I'm making this a little darker. Let me make the edge a little darker too. Just tapping, tap, 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 add some more pigment, and clean the brush. I'm going to take my, what am I going to do? I'm going to do a tiny line of woad right here. Just to put some color in there and a transition between the brown, the black, and now the indigo that I'm going to add. This is my indigo blue. And let's, I want this to be a really nice dark pigment. Adding one more, more. There we go. Nice and thick and dark. And actually, I do want this to be a straight line. For the middle part. There, and that's bleeding, and that's fine. Okay. I'm going to pull this color down a little bit, adding in more pigment if I need to, and more water. Probably the biggest challenge in a painting this small is, um, is the amount of water and moisture that you're adding. It is so easy to go overboard. And this isn't a super high quality piece of watercolor paper. It's not thick. It's not, um, is it? I'm not sure if it's cotton or not actually. Um, but it doesn't pull in the water, it doesn't uh, absorb it as nice as wood and arches um, watercolor paper. So it is very important. Get my raw ombre again. Um, important to have the right paper if you want to go, you know, consistency in your effects, if you want your paints to look your best. Um, I'm not super concerned about the quality of paper. Like, it's fine, it's professional paper. Um, my preference is the arches, however. Okay. Sort of sandwiching it. Sandwiching the blue with this brown, the umber. Okay. And now I want to add some, some dimension. We have our our visual, the lightness of the sky pulls down to the darkness of the horizon. Your eyes drawn down this. I added some, you know, additional pigment intentionally. It stops at the water and then you don't want your, the eye line to just end. Like we go down here, here, and now I want to make sure that everything sort of leads it back down in another direction. Um, so let's see, in the for, I'll add some charcoal here, and this is actually just going to be a very thin line. I'm going to add some here, here, these are our rocks on maybe this is a shoreline or a coast, okay, add in some more indigo. I really want the indigo to be the main bit here. And make sure I have lines. Very gently running the tip of my brush horizontally to get those lines. Just taking the paint that's already on the paper. Then I'm going to add just a touch of this 
burnt umber there. Add some warmth and some warmth to it here. I'll add some here. Just the very edge. There we go. And then I'm actually going to just take my water and lighten that up here. I really want this to fade into sort of nothing. I'll get my wood here. Just a touch and then my slate gray. And that's sort of a border, bottom border. Nothing too strong. I'm keeping the pigments very light, very transparent. And I'll add a tiniest hint of the indigo down here. Dab, dab, dab. That was not a hint. <laughs> it was like a flood. Okay. And I think I'll just, oops. Add a little bit more of this umber here. Okay. And again, I want to keep the cool tones around the border. So I'll take my slate gray and line that here. And actually, I'll run that all the way up to the edge here. And the reason for that is when we take off the tape, it's nice to have a very, very sharp line. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. A little bit of that slight gray here. I do like the white space. I think it's fine to leave those. Um, but I want to be intentional about how much is there. And that's not, this line is too harsh for me, so I'm just adding a little bit of that raw umber, and it's going to push back the gray. Nab it up, because there was too much water. And I'll just go like that. Okay. And I am extremely happy Am I though? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> the last thing I do want to do, I feel like this has a lot of visual interest, right? We're using this, we're still painting it while it's wet, so the colors are running together a little bit. That's nice. Um, I'm adding in a little bit of black. I'm seeing as it's drying that it's drying very, very light, and I think it's because I put too much water in. Um, so the pigment really disappears as the water evaporates. Um, but what I do want to make sure is up here, um, this this horizon is worth being in the pa in the painting. Um, so to do that, I'm not going to add more black because that's going to compete, I guess, with with this area. So I'll just take my slate gray, and what am I gonna do? So, oops. See, I'm really fighting with the amount of water on this today. I'll just put a little bit of line, horizontal line here. Oops. I want it to go down. Alright. Here we go. I don't know if you can hear the phone ringing in the background. Alright. And there we have it. We've got a beautiful little waterscape. And the most fun part is always always taking off the masking tape. There we 
you go. So pretty. Uh, so this is a, I don't know, moody fall, maybe late fall, early winter scene. Um, it's got the cool tones, the grays, blacks, umbers, and the indigo. And you can really play around with the different, you know, the, the color palette that you use. You could have, you could use an indigo for the sky. You could add some purples and greens and, you know, pinks, mauves, make this like a, a spring scene coming to life without changing any of the lines, you know, anything that we've worked on here. You could just redo the scene with, with different colors. Um, so to play around with that, that's a really fun one. Um, very easy and... Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did make the painting and you're proud of it, and even if you're not proud of it, uh, take me, share me, uh, share it to me. I'd love to see it and see what you are working on.